Understanding the layers and the design elements they provide will help you to plan your credential design. This example covers the layers and design elements listed here. Our design for this ID uses the portrait orientation. The front side of the credential has both static text and variable text, as well as a static image, photograph, and signature. We will use both the background and color layers for these elements. We'll design the background layer first, so we enable and activate it. By using a layer just for the background, you don't need to worry about moving or altering the background elements when arranging other elements in the design. You'll place those elements on other layers. To add an image to the background, drop the static graphic field onto the credential. Notice that the Properties tab is now showing. These properties are specific to the static graphic field that we placed on the credential. If you wish, you can rename the field. Click Browse to select the image you want to use for the background. You can rotate the image by grabbing the handle and rotating the image, or by entering the number of degrees for the rotation. The Rotation field is a property in several credential elements. Specify the position of the left and top of the image and the width and height of the image. Our image covers only a portion of the credential, but you can use an image that covers the entire credential. Expand the Advanced section and scroll down to Sizing Options. We choose Completely Fill the Field. When you choose this option, it is possible that the graphic will distort, so be sure you are using an image where distortion doesn't matter. You would not choose this option for your organization's logo. You can add other elements, such as shapes and text, to the background. We're adding a rectangle above the picture. We position it on the left. Its width is the credential width. We don't want an outline or rounded edges, but we do want to specify the fill color. You can select a color from the palette, or you can enter a specific hexadecimal color to match your branding requirements. We also want to add a white line between the picture and rectangle, specifying its location and width, and in the Appearance section, its weight and color. Note that True Credential software displays the elements in the order you place them on a layer. If you have overlapping elements on the same layer, add them to the design in the order you want them to appear on the credential. Our final element for the background is our organization name. We use a static text field for this. Remember to change the display text for this field to look exactly as you want it to appear on the credential. Our text is only one line, but if you have text that wraps or needs multiple lines like an address, you can select the checkbox for either word wrap or multi-line. We center the alignment. To get perfectly centered text, make a text field the width of the credential. Expand the Appearance section to select the font properties. We've completed our background design. Next, we move to the color layer, which is already enabled, so we can just click it to activate it. On the color layer, we want to add a photograph, variable text fields, a date, and signature. We add a photograph element by dropping the photograph field onto the design. Use the photograph properties to specify the alignment, position, dimensions, and rotation. For the alignment, we choose Fill the entire field. When choosing this option, you need to be careful. If the photograph has a different aspect ratio from the defined space, it will distort the image. We position the photograph and specify the width and height. The default width and height in the Credential Designer is the standard aspect ratio for portraits, so we leave it. Note that when you design the workflow for this credential, be sure you use the same aspect ratio. If you want a border, expand the Border section. Select Display Border and choose the Weight, Color, and Corners. Expand the Advanced section for additional options. We'll look at these options when we design the back of the credential. Now, add two text fields for the student's first and last name. We label the field names and then enter sample data. Your operator will enter the actual data as part of the workflow. With the variable text fields, we choose Automatically Adjust the Font Size to accommodate names that may exceed the width of the text box. Otherwise, the name could be cut off if forced to use the selected font size. Expand the Appearance section to select the font properties where we can change the font and background color. 
to align elements on a credential, select one element and then hold down your control key and select the other elements. Choose the alignment you want from the Properties tab. We want to include an issue date with this credential, so we drop a date field onto the credential. We change the sample data to show just the date and then choose the alignment. We want a notation on the credential stating that this is the issue date, so we drop a static text field above the date and enter issue date followed by a colon in the display text. We select both fields to align them. When we select multiple text boxes, we can also specify the font properties for them at the same time. The last element for the front of this credential is a signature. We drop the signature field at the bottom of the credential and remove the backdrop from it. Note that Signature Capture is not supported with the Express Edition of True Credential software. Now, we want to add a top coat to the front of this credential to protect it for its one year credential life. Top coat and lamination each have their own layers. We enable and activate the top coat layer to specify that the front of the credential will have a top coat. Be sure you use the correct supplies in your printer to support this design. Note how you see a slight blur over the design. If you want to remove the blur without removing the top coat, simply click the eye to make the layer invisible. In the next section, we'll design the backside of our student ID.